guys welcome back to my channel today me and matt are going to be tourists in our own city if you're new here we are from oslo norway we are going to spend the day hopefully like typical tourists would we're going to do some tourist activities we're going to see all the touristy stuff and yeah explore the city as tourists and eat out for all the meals i don't have anything else to say other than i hope you enjoy the video give it a thumbs up if you do and please subscribe if you haven't and and let's go get some proper hotel breakfast. For today's breakfast, we went to Clarion the Hub Hotel, which is located right in the heart of the city center. I haven't really thought about it before we decided to make this video, but you can pay to eat at almost any hotel breakfast buffet, even though you're not a guest there, but it will cost you quite a bit. This was 395 per person, so 790 for us too. So it is a little bit expensive, but I would say definitely worth it in this case. I did check out a couple of other hotels and they all had the same price. So the first plate is a savory one. We have a roll, scrambled eggs, fried egg, one piece of falafel, <laughs> bacon and salmon, and iced tea. And Matt has a more exciting plate. But I want to try some of the cured stuff. And I saw they have honey buns. Oh. Yum. Mm -hmm. This buffet is probably one of the best buffets I've ever been to. The selection at this buffet is actually a little bit too good. I mean, it makes portion control very hard. I always like to have a bowl of yogurt as well. So I have a vanilla yogurt and forest fruit yogurt with dried berries, granola and jam. So the final plate is the dessert plate and I have a carrot cake, a chocolate cake, this is like a chocolate and vanilla twist. And this is another type of pastry. I don't know what it is. And we have the honey bun. So we're gonna split that one. Yes. Beginning to get quite full, but we have a lot of walking, so <laughs> we lot of walking. yeah, we need it. <laughs> that honey bun looks to have the perfect texture. Mm. Cinnamon. Mm -hmm. That was soft. So the pastries were nice, but if you're going to go for one thing from the dessert buffet, go for the cakes. They are the softest cakes you have ever tasted. Uh, last time I was here, I think I got three slices of the carrot cake. They're so good. Okay, so when you're walking out of the doors of the Clarion Hotel, you're walking directly into the one of the tram stations here, and you can see like behind there is uh, the city center's biggest, biggest mall. It's called Oslo City. There is another mall. There is a third mall. <laughs> and over there is also the train station. Which is kind of a mall. Yeah, so here is the most ugly mall you have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't really help that I'm trying to make it look prettier with a uh, Yeah. <laughs> so we have stayed here at the Clarion uh, two times. And the breakfast buffet there is the best I've ever seen. And we also loved the hotel, at least the first time. Yeah, second time we were unlucky yeah. with a room. Yeah. Another uh, hotel we recommend is just like across the square, and it's that one, and it's called the the American Line. Yeah. American Linien. So here you can see the old and the new. So that's the old train station, and the, here is the new building. I want to, one which one which is prettiest. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to give you different perspectives here. That's the hotel we were just at. There's behind there is the Oslo City Mall. Here's the other mall, the new train station, the old train station. We are going down there to the Opera. That's the other hotel we were talking about. And the shopping street goes up there. We'll go there later. Yes. There's the opera. And there is the library, like the main library. I think it's the biggest one we have. I think so. It's a pretty big building. It has the library and it has like a bunch of restaurants and stuff. All of this, like the area here is pretty new. The opera is uh, starting to get old now though. It is actually getting quite old. Yeah, but all the other stuff is very new. So 
down there you can find like a bunch of restaurants and stuff we haven't really been there a lot i think it's more touristy probably yeah i don't know we should explore it another time but now we're going to explore the opera i actually have never been to the top so we're going there now maybe inside as well uh i don't think it's open oh okay <laughs> <laughs> not inside just on the top <laughs> and we'll see the city center from there yeah this is like the the dock so here they have like a bunch of saunas and stuff on the water that you can rent that's more of a winter or fall activity so maybe we'll do that then but yeah this is also the city promenade you can follow the road here along the harbor uh, on foot or bike or car well, yeah push bike no uh, uh scooter <laughs> scooter <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't know it was so big up here. No, me neither. I had no idea it was this much space. I thought it was just like a tiny like space at the front there. But it's actually the whole, everything is The whole accessible. thing. Let's go look at the view. The clouds are so pretty today. It's like angry clouds, happy clouds, <laughs> blue sky. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, so that's where we were earlier. That's the hotel and the train station. And yeah, the shopping street is up there. We walked there and zoom in here. So this whole area is uh, called Sörenga and most of that is apartments and you have like restaurants at the bottom and people like go swimming here this is the opera beach and this one's actually going to be extended they're going to double the size Ooh. and there's the monk museum that's where we're heading next and that is just art floating art yeah and this was supposed to be art yeah but look how ugly that building is a lot of people not very happy about how they made that building because it's uh, new i don't think monk would have liked that building he would have spun in his grave yeah literally <laughs> they also have like a sculpture outside of it that is quite weird as well So apparently the opera has guided tours, just so you know. For not being a museum type of person, I actually enjoyed the Monk Museum. He has some fascinating paintings and some of them I actually found very pretty. Is that Voldemort? As you probably know, his most famous painting is The Scream. Uh, they have it in three different like versions here, but they only show you one at a time. So they show you one for 30 minutes and then it closes and then one of the other ones opens up the next 30 minutes. So that was kind of a cool uh, arrangement. I get why they do that. They only want to watch one painting at a time. In addition to Munch, there was also one other artist that had an exhibition there. Uh, I'm not familiar with that artist, but she did have some pretty cool paintings as well. There was also one room that was called the Chamber of Chaos. When you're at the top floor, remember to just stop and admire the view for a second because it's just gorgeous from up there. I 
I also want to warn you that you shouldn't come hungry to the Monk Museum. The cafe there had some pretty crazy prices. Small cakes and tarts were like around $10, which is pretty insane if you ask me. So it had they had good selection, but the prices were crazy. So we're just finished at the Monk Museum and it was uh, interesting. It was. It was interesting. It was good. It um, was, um, I would say it's worth 160 kroners. It was. Yes. It, 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 he has made a lot. Yes. And it was a lot to see. We just saw that here by the train station, they actually have uh, bike rentals. That's a tip for you tourists. Yep. But we also have city bikes, a lot of them throughout the city, and um, like scooters, and Lime has their own bikes as well. Uh, E-bikes. Yeah. So next up on our list is to walk up Karl Johan, which is our main street, and like this shopping street in the city center. Yeah. So we have the harbor behind us. There's the train station again. <laughs> and behind that bus. Reveal. The big reveal. The slow reveal. Call your home. Which leads to the castle. Yes. Almost at the end of Karl Johan is uh, the parliament. So this is that. And this is the hotel we wanted to have breakfast at, but it was fully booked. So yeah, another recommendation for breakfast is Le here. Grand Hotel. Yes, it's very old fashioned compared to the hub. And I just walked past a couple of tourists where one, one of the guys said, the Norwegians, they are very nice. <laughs> <laughs> should take the sightseeing bus. Yeah. But that will be next time. Next time, yeah. But they're here at the end of the, the street. There's one there and one there. I'm looking like a proper tourist today. <laughs> <laughs> So just before the castle you take a right and just a couple of blocks that way you find the historical museum. This day they had a samurai exhibition and a viking exhibition, which is both topics I'm very fascinated by. And it was actually an open tour going on in the viking exhibition while we were there. And I found that super interesting because even though I'm a Norwegian, I don't remember anything that we learned about the vikings when I was in school. I have to say though, the historical museum was surprisingly small. I expected it to be a lot bigger, so that was a bit disappointing. But still, I feel like it's a fun little activity to do if you're a tourist in Oslo. Literally only like one minute walk from the museum is the place we're having lunch. So the museum is over there and right in front of me is the place we're having lunch, which is Den Glade Gris, which means the happy pig. Which is me today. We are, yeah, we're two happy pigs. <laughs> So all of the lunch uh, options here are like traditional or, or classic Norwegian dishes. This one is very Norwegian, but I think it's more of a dinner, I would say. Yeah. So we're going for the classic Norwegian shrimp sandwich and 
the traditional Norwegian eggs, bacon and potatoes. Very typical Norwegian breakfast. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm super hungry. Me too. I, I'm, I could literally eat a pig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that pig. We usually have the bread with that, but we didn't know that it didn't include bread, so... We'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we're sharing both of these. They're looking so good. That looks amazing. Yeah. And those potatoes, they look fire. Yes. That's perfectly fried bacon. Yeah. That's actually perfect. So from Den Glade Gris you only have to walk a couple of minutes to get to the castle and every day at 1.30 p.m. there is a changing of the guards. A lot of people here to see this. <laughs> I didn't know. I have to admit I feel like this was a bit underwhelming. I don't know what I had envisioned in my head that this would look like but it was basically just some of the guards walked out, some of the guards walked in. That was basically it. One of the guards even held a trumpet but she never used it. It actually looks more interesting in the video than it did in real life. You might find it interesting to watch but just know that you could be disappointed if you expect to show. Look at all those people disappointed. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so we had to head home just to walk Buddy, but now we're back where we left off, by the castle, and it, it has been some rain while we were out, <laughs> yeah. and it's still pretty... It's scary. Pretty close to rain, yeah. But we are going to optimistically find some scooters and explore some more. <laughs> So just a couple of hundred meters down the road, we actually got caught up by the rain and wind again. So we had to escape inside to the nearest mall. So we went into Palea, which is in Kaluhan, and we just sat there and had a cup of coffee and waited for the rain to stop, but it never stopped. So we decided to do this portion of the day the next day where it was sunny. So just pretend that it's the same day, but this is actually what we had planned to do after the castle. We walked down to Akershus Fortress. I'm going to quote uh, Wikipedia here. <laughs> Akershus Fortress is a medieval castle in the Norwegian capital Oslo that was built to protect and provide a royal residence for the city. It is believed to have been built around the late 1290s, so it's old. I feel like walking around uh, Akershus Fortress is a must when you're in Oslo. The view of the harbor is just so beautiful, but the building itself is just so pretty and I feel like I'm almost brought back in time. The fortress do have a museum, I believe, and there's also tours you can take. But I do wish that there was more to see there, especially now during like tourist season. Now you can just walk around and there's not really anything happening. I would love if there was like maybe a small market or maybe people dressed up like they were from the medieval period or something. I don't know, just something to bring the experience up. Regardless, I do love walking around the fortress and I would highly recommend to any tourist. After the fortress we rented some scooters and took them down to Akebrygge. Even though you don't have to rent scooters for that, it's like just a five minute walk or something, so I don't know why we did that. <laughs> Here at the harbor you can actually buy fresh shrimps straight from the fishing boats. I have actually never done that before but I would highly recommend because I've heard that they're delicious. So if you want to taste some fresh Norwegian shrimps, I think here's the place to buy them. From here you can also take the ferries that go out to the islands. 
and here you can also find the National Museum. We didn't feel like visiting three museums in one day, so maybe we'll do the National Museum next time. Akerbrygge is this area down by the harbor, and it's a long boardwalk consisting of restaurants, and it's also a mall there. And along the boardwalk you can also find a bunch of ice cream stands. There's also a popular restaurant slash bar out on the water that's called Lektern. And also here you can rent saunas. And I think I saw that you can also rent electric boats here. But of course we came for the ice cream. I think this is probably the best place to enjoy an ice cream in Oslo during summer. If you eat anything here on the pier, watch out for the seagulls. They will swoop down and catch your food if they can. I got a scoop of chocolate, a soft serve with Oreo, pretty big ice cream. Matt got a soft serve with chocolate and nuts. Needless to say, it was delicious. From Akebrygge, the tram goes straight to our next destination, which is Frognerparken or Frognerpark. Park. The tram actually stops right outside the park, so it makes it really easy to find it. The area of the park that has all the sculptures are called Viglandsparken or the Vigland Park because they are made by an artist called Gustav Vigland. The most popular sculpture in this park is the little angry boy that we call Sinnatagen. You can probably see by his hand, a lot of people touching it, so it's gold. But this, I think, was Matt's favorite sculpture. <laughs> I feel like this park is a must-see when you're in Oslo, but I would recommend going here when the weather is nice. It's uh, definitely prettiest when it's sunny. If you walk through the park, you get to a place called Majorstua, where you can take the tram again towards the city center. The tram goes down the shopping street Bukstavayen. So if you have more time, you can skip the tram and explore the shopping street instead. But according to our agenda, we wanted to just take the tram to the city center again to have dinner. And here we are back on the rainy day. <laughs> we had to change our plans a bit. We were going to eat outside at another restaurant, but because of the rain, we decided to eat at Way Down South. And if you have been following me for a while, you know that we love this place. This is an American barbecue place uh, located like at the bottom of the Grinelöck. They have delicious food. We wanted to test out the sliders because they serve sliders uh, before 6 p.m. and we have never tested these sliders before. But these are not sliders in my opinion. These are burgers. They are not small. So this is the pulled pork slider and the chicken slider and they were both amazing. But I think next time we will probably share one of them. <laughs> and we got tater tots on the side. After dinner we walked up to Grinelöcka, which is basically this area. We walked up a road called Markvägen, which is usually full of life, but at the time we got here everything was closed, so it looks a bit more sad. But I would re highly recommend walking up this road and just exploring Grinelöcka during daytime. And also here things are usually open during Sundays, which it's not down in the city center. Yeah, we walked up to uh, Culinaris, which 
which is an ice cream stand to buy one scoop of ice cream there because they have brown cheese ice cream. Brown cheese is probably the most Norwegian thing but it's not for everyone but I would definitely say that this ice cream is. It's much sweeter and creamier than the actual brown cheese. Not far from the Kulinaris stand you can find Harald's Waffel which is a part two of our dessert this day. We wanted to buy a classic Norwegian waffle. They also usually have brown cheese ice cream here but they didn't this day so that's why we went to Kulinaris to get that. It looks a little bit sad, but hopefully it will be better than it looks. <laughs> normally it's a lot better looking than this. Yeah, normally we have more toppings. Yeah. Because we're, we had the brown, uh, brown cheese ice cream, we just have jam on this. But uh, the Norwegian way is with uh, jam and brown cheese and or jam maybe, and sour cream. Yeah, and sour cream, yeah. Yeah. So, but this is uh, with strawberry. Mm. Mm. I think that is one of the best uh, waffles, Norwegian waffles, in town. Yeah. We should do a test because I haven't done a lot of them. Most Norwegians, they make it at home or they have it like on these like cottages out in the, in the woods where you go... What's it called? Hiking. Yeah, but it's like... Oh, like, where um, they, they sell waffles and coffee and cocoa and stuff like that. Yeah. Out in the woods. It's kind of like a... Yeah, it's like a tourist cabin. Yeah, but this is... The dough is really good. I would just recommend more topping. Okay, we are ending the day exactly where we started. And we are at 17,641 steps. I would say that's a pretty good day. And it would probably be more if the weather hadn't turned to shit. But that is like typical Norwegian summer. If it can be sunny and 25 degrees at uh, one minute and then the next it will be pouring rain and 17 degrees. I think that's what it was today. Now it's 19. But yeah, it's been such a fun day. We are really tired so we just, we're just gonna lay down and relax for the rest of the day. But we hope you enjoyed being tourists in Oslo with us. We were thinking we're going to do this more than once so if we didn't if there's something you wanted us to do that we didn't do please recommend it down below and we will include it in the next video but yeah we uh, hope you enjoyed being tourists with us and please give the video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and subscribe if you haven't and we will see you in the next video bye bye